from Genetic, our two presenters. Mr. Jakub Kozak, Regional Sales Manager, East and Central Europe, and Mr. Charles Pittman, Product Marketing Manager. Both of you, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm glad to, to be here. Um, it, it's a pleasure to join this uh, this great event. It's not the first time for me. I think it's uh, it's already a third edition, and it's always a great opportunity to uh, to meet customers, to meet end users, and and, and friends from the from the industry in Adriatic uh, region. So I'm I'm happy to be uh, here another time. And uh, today there is with me uh, my colleague from Montreal, Charles uh, Pittman. Uh, responsible uh, for very interesting um, uh, product line uh, that we will be talking um, talking about um, uh, today, um, and um, Charles will uh, will give a majority of this presentation. So let me just very briefly um, introduce Genetech to uh, to those of you who haven't heard about about us and. Uh, who haven't met us in the business or in the or in the field, and then I will give a floor to uh, to Charles. And at the end of the presentation, hopefully, we will have a, a chance, a few minutes uh, to discuss uh, uh, with you more in details. If there are any 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 questions, note them down, please, and and, and we will answer them in Q and A. If there is not enough time to to do so, we will we will get back to you offline uh, later after the presentation. So uh, Genetech is a Canadian uh, company. Uh, I must say one of the oldest um, company in the, um, in the industry. And by industry, I mean uh, IP security. Uh, as you know, IP security started in 1996 uh, when, when the first IP camera was introduced to the market. and. Uh, Obviously, if you have IP camera, you need to have an IP-based platform and software to, to do something with, with the data from the camera. In case of camera, data is uh, is picture. Um, and um, Omnicast, um, our video management software, was, uh, in fact, first IP-based um, video management uh, software introduced um, just a little bit after the first camera was introduced. It was in 1996 uh, when we started this industry. And uh, and this is uh, in, uh, almost 25 years um, when we are with you and we are bringing um, new technology towards uh, the security industry. Uh, you have uh, uh, our contact uh, details, uh, please. Uh, don't hesitate uh, to, to use them. Um, I'm responsible for uh, East Central Europe, and by East Central Europe, me, me, uh, me under we understand all Adriatic uh, countries. This is one of our target markets um, and, uh, for, for this, uh, and, and, and next year we want to grow our business in Adriatic region significantly. Um, so I'm more than happy to discuss directly about opportunities uh, with end clients um, and uh, also I'm open to discuss um, business opportunities with the system integrators or consultants because we are still looking for some uh, channel, uh, channel partners. Uh, that I think would be it uh, when it comes to introduction to the, to the company and myself and, and, and now Charles. Uh, please take over. The floor is yours. Thanks, Jakub. So um, apologies, it's a, a little early on this side of the ocean. Um, my name is Charles Pittman. So I'm the product marketing manager for Unified Platform at Genetech. Uh, that encompasses everything from the uh, user interface of our product to uh, the different media throughout which we populate the uh, security information. Uh, mobile apps, web clients, and thick clients, uh, and what we call the uh, industrial IoT uh, integration, which we're going to talk about a little today. Uh, so we wanted to talk about how you can ingest data from uh, a wide variety of sensors, right? Jakob talked about the uh, inception of the uh, IP security markets back in the day with the initial uh, IP cameras. That was a huge switch uh, you know, around 25 years ago, 
where we started looking at video is not just an analog device, but something that could transmit over a network. And eventually that became an opening to start having more sensors on those cameras and eventually new sensors that were being used on similar networks, maybe segregated at the beginning, but slowly but surely we started to aggregate those. Uh, and uh, we're seeing quite large internal networks at our security clients uh, bases where be it uh, building management or operations or security or life safety, they're all communicating in one big network. So why not um, experience them as one singular system? So as part of that story, we really see data as not just about ingesting and storing information, but how you use it, right? Going from getting it into a single system, being able to parse it and utilize it in a way that makes sense to the operators and to the administrators who manage those systems, being able to contextualize it within that system so you can see uh, and, and really put it into relationships with other things on maps or in, uh, say, a dashboard so that it's uh, easy for those who are trying to use the information to uh, understand how it relates to everything else in their system. Being able to take action, uh, do something with that data. It's all well and good to know that a fire alarm is going off, but ultimately we want to allow the operators to not just see it, but be able to uh, take the next steps that are gonna help them rectify the situation. And finally, able to collaborate and work together with others within their organization uh, to achieve the outcomes that they want. Now, <clears throat> speaking of connectivity and, and these networks that have started to develop, there are some great benefits to the fact that we're starting to see new and, and, and really cool devices coming onto to networks. Uh, IoT is a, a bit of a buzzword these days, but uh, we're seeing it in our day-to-day -day life driven by uh, the adoption of phones, the adoption of technology that uh, gives us a common UI regardless of uh, what we're trying to do with the sensors in our home. Uh, but there are still problems that arise and still uh, challenges that particularly businesses are seeing when they try to adopt these technologies. Right? While uh, consumer electronics are really driving everything to be connected, you can think of everything that you see being sold to you in your home from smart lighting to smart um, you know thermostats uh, smart tvs these things are ultimately uh, a, a boon right we're seeing a huge increase in the number of different types of devices uh, that are available and you know uh, the home is just the first frontier of that um, it only takes one uh, ceo to have an excellent new device in their uh, home environment to say, hey, you know what? This would be great to have at work. This would be amazing for my employees. And so uh, the barrier to entry becomes much lower as this uh, consumer electronic uh, um, panoply uh, grows. Uh, data is great, right? But ultimately it's only as useful as our ability to aggregate it and use it. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of businesses that they are spearheading this uh, connected device strategy. They're installing hundreds or thousands of devices throughout their facility, but they have no strategy to use it, right? And they're struggling to find a way to bridge all of the new devices that they're bringing in into a singular uh, and effective data management and utilization strategy. <clears throat> And because of that consumer electronic, uh, I guess, origin for a lot of these uh, devices, they're focused on being easy to use. You need any random person to be able to pick up one of these lights, put it into a socket, and it gets, comes on Wi-Fi and is easy to find and use. That sometimes comes at the cost of uh, security. And cybersecurity is a, uh, an extremely important aspect of these. It may seem like there's no, um, 
no risk associated with simply installing a new device on your network, but the risks are endless. We've seen this countless times that sometimes it is the HVAC system or the, uh, or, or the lighting system that becomes the fail point, the weak spot for um, bad actors to exploit. <clears throat> so when we started looking at Genetech at how do we bring data into uh, our security environments, we didn't just want to provide an access point for this. We wanted to make sure that once the data is inside, we can provide the information that customers need directly in an environment they are already monitoring. Why? Because it's important for us to not just say, hey, there's a new type of sensor, a new point of data, but do it in a way that doesn't overwhelm the operators. It's easy to go from, again, 50, 100 cameras in a facility to uh, 1,500 uh, sensors, and suddenly you don't know where to look, you don't know what to pay attention to. So we need that to be intuitive and easy to use. And that's where our industrial IoT approach comes in. So a little bit of contextualization because as I said, IoT is a, a buzzword. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. For us, <clears throat> this is a way of connecting devices that communicate over standard protocol, protocols into our platform security center uh, where common operations can be performed on them. We synchronize these devices and their, their, their data and their states. We're able to often trigger alarms, will always trigger alarms and actions within security center, sometimes even write uh, values to those devices themselves. And we want to be able to provide the information not just as um, you know triggers and, and rules, but also current value or a time series so that people have an opportunity to engage with their data uh, directly within uh, security center and see them on say dashboards alongside their intrusion or their uh, video information. When we talk about industrial IoT, we really have seven protocols in mind, which you can see up here. Uh, we chose those because they're the ones that our customers had been asking for, and they really span across different applications, right? You can think of SNMP as being a very common uh, network device management, servers, uh, switches, but really any network device typically has some sort of SNMP um, architecture. You can think of BACnet or, uh, or OPC or Modbus as controlling things within a facility, being able to provide a little bit of um, you know, management of devices. And TCP, HTTP, MQTT become really uh, very easy ways to uh, speak to almost any kind of device. So where do we see this coming to a head? Where are people using it? Well, we see a lot of people using industrial IoT to contextualize their security environment. I already have doors, video, uh, maybe intrusion uh, within my system. But maybe I want to have uh, some kind of information about, say, uh, the temperature around there so that I know if a door is says it's being left open, what's going on in my environment? Or even if the door sensor is not working, I could see that the temperature is uh, slowly but surely uh, decreasing in the winter. Maybe something's not quite closed. Maybe there's a problem there. Enriching our uh, security with new inputs, so being able to uh, use other things within the environment to inform our uh, operators as to where to pay, they should be paying attention, what's going on, where is their activity. And then the converse of that, using the inherent information and data that's available within a security system to drive other operational events. And we'll talk a little bit about those once we get to the demo portion. Now, ultimately, it's all well and good to get new kinds of devices and inputs and outputs within a security environment. But as we mentioned, that's just the beginning. What we really wanna be able to do with that is ask the question, now what? What does the operator ultimately want to accomplish once they see a panic button, once they see that a fence is opened or a fire 
um, detector is active. Well, we provide the, the capacity to take that information, build it into uh, standard operating procedures, or even background automation, things that are going on that the operators don't even need to know about, so that you, A, guide the operators in their day-to-day -day tasks and take away from them the things they don't need to be involved in to decrease their workload, yet still allow the facility to run smoothly. Some of the applications, and, and I'm going to invite Jakob to uh, you know, embellish a little bit here. Uh, we're seeing some things like, um, speaking of those inputs that enrich uh, security environments, uh, airports in particular are looking to better contextualize what's going on within their facility. Airports have huge numbers of cameras. It's impossible to monitor everything all the time. So we've seen some customers looking at, say, um, different baggage carousels. And when a baggage carousel is active, they monitor that video preferentially instead of the ones of all of the empty baggage carousels that are on uh, that are in, in the space. This allows their operators to focus their attention where something is happening and not elsewhere. And in that way, they're able to interact faster and uh, make the right decisions uh, rather than trying to divvy up their attention over everything. In cities, cities have a ton of new types of uh, infrastructure that is available to them. Some examples are you know, road weather sensors, um, lighting systems within cities are starting to become more and more intelligent. Uh, as we start moving away from old incandescent bulbs towards uh, LED bulbs, this provides a lot of space and a lot of uh, room for infrastructure to grow. Uh, but there's no limit. It could be, uh, you know, uh, fire hydrants or even uh, garbage sensors to say how full a garbage bin is, so that your, um, your your waste management is not just driving around in circles, but is proactively going to empty the bins that are filling up. Yeah, and and here, Charles, if I may, if I may add um, um, example from real life, and 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 this is something that uh, that is happening uh, just right now in one of the cities in. Uh, uh, in East Central Europe, uh, our 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 great customer, using you know almost thousand cameras in the in the city, both for security, which we can call uh, you know safe city, a part of the system, but also for the road infrastructure, um, they have the special department uh, to keep uh, city roads in uh, in proper shape. And uh, you know, especially after after winter, you have a lot of a lot of uh, holes and cracks in the um, uh, in the road uh, surface. And uh, in most cities, it is still um, identified by, by 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 dedicated services that that simply need to travel um, uh, through the city and um, and make notes of the of the you know damages to the to the road surface, and then take action. But but cities um, realize, and the city that that I'm talking about is just implementing this, the solutions that you know we have a lot of cameras uh, in the city space, and the cameras, uh, big part of them, are uh, looking closely uh, at the road surface. And uh, why not to add the the solution which would be in in an automatic way um, detecting the uh, uh, the damages in the damages in the in the road surface. And, and they use video analytics for it. Um, uh, there was a proof of concept realized, and it, 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 of course, it's not it's not one hundred percent accurate, but it's saving a lot of time and money um, to 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 first of all get information where the uh, the damage occurred and uh, uh, how how important it is and and how quickly it should be it should be done. It can be also used to uh, to check if the road signage. Um, is um, is in proper position because you know that sometimes they are uh, they uh, their position is changed and they are misplaced, uh, which also can be automatically uh, detected. So, great example of adding additional value to a already existing uh, security solution. And that's an excellent example, right, of how you you bridge those gaps and having more and more different types of um, information within the city allows you to build that out, right? For instance, you could 
start bringing in data about where the um, the contractors are situated so that you can directly uh, tell them where to go to fill in those potholes once they're identified, right? You become, a, you, you get a more fluid experience for the city as a whole. And then finally, there's life safety sensors. Life safety is uh, really huge within uh, this, this context. We're seeing a lot of uh, customers looking at uh, bringing in fire panels or um, so vaping detection or uh, you know um, dress detection to help ensure that uh, their their facilities are safe. So as we're closing up, we just want to show you a few examples of what this would look like within a security environment. Um, just we're going to start with something very basic, just showing how you can add sensors to again, as we were saying, a single interface. It's not about adding a new task for IoT management within a security system. It's about layering the information, right? So you can see here, you've got your cameras, your doors, but ultimately you're just gonna add new things. So whether they're uh, point of sale, lighting, temperature sensors, uh, intercoms, or you know municipal things like fire hydrants, they just become one more uh, addition to your system where you're already looking, allowing your, your operators to not get, um, to not ignore them for one thing, but also not get overwhelmed by the additional uh, devices and information. Uh, another a life safety example. So one of the great things about bringing in these new kinds of devices is that oftentimes, as much as we want to have full coverage of a facility, uh, there are places where you don't want to have cameras and where the people you work with don't want to have cameras. Uh, changing rooms, bathrooms, uh, there, there may be particular areas that are, are sensitive, conference rooms, for instance. But that doesn't mean that bad actors might not be doing things within there. Uh, in this example, this could be someone who is uh, vaping within a washroom. We don't want to be constantly monitoring those washrooms with uh, video for, I think, obvious reasons. But we may want to still have the context around that place and the sensors within it to know what's going on so that when an issue occurs, for instance, someone, um, you know, pulling out a vape pen in a washroom at a, uh, say, an elementary school or high school, we're able to figure out who is responsible uh, by tying that back to video and being able to verify it, even if it's not within the area, right? So here, we're looking at a camera outside of the bathroom, but as soon as the event occurs, we can see who's exiting and follow up on that to make sure that they get a little stern talking to about uh, the importance of following signage. Um, we spoke a little bit about devices and machinery. Well, it becomes very fluid once you have different kinds of systems where you can see the state of the device. Once it turns on, you bring up the video associated to the devices as they're active, focusing your attention and your operator's attention on where things are happening, what is going on that might need your, uh, your attention. Similarly, uh, dashboards become super important in a context like this. Being able to not just create a dashboard, but do it yourself uh, and, and customize it as you go along to find out what works best for customers is super important. Here you can see um, you know, a map environment, but also the different data points that are coming in uh, within, within that context. Right, so you can see uh, this is a utility. They are, show the throughput of power, the, uh, the voltage, which can be important to determine whether something that you might not see with your eyes has happened. Let's say a common, a common issue in, uh, say, substations is the um, copper wiring that uh, is very valuable, might be stolen, but you might not realize until it's too late, until someone uh, is, is subject to an electric shock because, the, 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 because there have been changes within the facility. But seeing the voltage over time, being able to determine whether there's an anomaly or a sudden dip uh, or increase, that can alert you to something actually uh, terrible happening in the facility. Uh, this could be, you know, a general uh, environmental sensors as well, but I want to jump over to 
uh, the real operational uh, procedures that you can do, where you can filter down through all of the events coming in, get cut through the noise in a facility, and focus on the events that are important, but also guide your operators who already have too much to do realistically in a given day to try and proactively figure out what the next steps are, you provide them those steps. So for them, they have a uh, replicable uh, and, and easy to uh, follow procedure uh, in order to, um, to resolve situations in a satisfactory and beneficial fashion, right? In this case, we're looking at a fire that's taking place, the different things, the different steps we might need to take in order to, um, to, to, to address it, calling emergency services, triggering um, an evacuation, that kind of thing. And again, just to close up, you know, uh, we wanted to focus on the fact that, again, new inputs are great, new data is great, the, the, the possibilities are endless, but ultimately you, you need to find a platform that's going to allow you to parse that new data so it doesn't overwhelm operators, visualize it and see it within the context of your facility so that it makes sense, uh, take action, do something about it in order to rectify the situation, and finally collaborate with other teams and ultimately be able to look back and investigate and better yourself. So thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, this is a very good and, and interesting um, opportunity. Uh, and we welcome any questions you might have. Mr. Yaku, Mr. Charles, extraordinary presentation. Uh, we have a few questions for you. And my first, uh, are events tri uh, triggered by Genetech or the integrated application? Um, so that's an excellent question. Typically the events are gonna come in through a, the integrated applications or, or devices. They, they don't necessarily need to be a separate um, application at all. Um, but then within our system, we have custom events that will come up and then be used to trigger actions or procedures. And my last, uh, is there any chance of integrating devices to Genetech Security Center if none of protocols mentioned in the presentation is available? Uh, so yes, there are other uh, methods of doing that. We have um, <clears throat> open protocols to bring in either through um, you know, flat files. So if you're able to export something into a CSV or a JSON file, we're able to bring that in. Uh, or we have a REST API that can be used to pretty much bring in anything as long as someone's going to do a moderate amount of coding uh, to, to get there. Mr. Yakub, Mr. Charles, thank you for your participating. Thank you very much. See you thank soon. Thank you for the opportunity. Next time. See you. Uh, thank you, and we will continue.